Hello again, everybody. I'm going to share with you uh, an interesting problem in limits with limits. And uh, I'm curious to see how you solve it. Um, originally, I was going to make a longer video, as I always have so many things to discuss uh, in the realm of mathematics and morals and all that. But it's actually getting late. It's uh, getting late, at least for me. It's rather late here in Virginia. It's about nine uh, nine twenty in the evening, and tomorrow there's I've got to go to church tomorrow, so early morning service. Uh, so I wanted to take a walk before I retire for the night. So I'm going to be sharing with you a problem. Originally, I was going to actually, before the problem, give you a series of mathematical of logical fallacies. We've got a lot of fallacies in the uh, the circus that surrounds us these days. A lot of logical fallacies. But I, I figured I'll do that in another video because I know some of you some of you correctly uh, tell me that you know if you're going to do a problem on limits, why are you mixing up topics, right? And it, it sort of makes sense. I don't want to distract from the problem itself. But there's always a lot going on. There's always a lot to say, and um, you know I just have a lot on my mind. Usually, I'm always um, I have a piece of paper. I, I usually have paper where I write down my ideas, and then uh, from there, sort of. Um, decide what videos, what kind of videos to to prepare for you all. So uh, here goes the problem. I want you to think about it first, and then I'm going to uh, show you the solution and see if it actually matches with what you have. All right, so hopefully you can see on the board, I want you to find the limit of the above sequence. And n is in the uh, is an element of the positive integers for all n that are elements of the pot that are elements of the positive integers see what you come up with and then uh we will discuss the solution to this all right so hopefully you've thought about this question you've paused the video you've thought about it you've come up with a solution um I'm going to share with you perhaps a theorem that some of you might not be familiar with. Some of you might be. There is a theorem in math. It's called the Stoltz-Cesaro theorem. And it is a, um, it's used to prove the convergence of a sequence. And the, it's, it's named after uh, Stoltz, who was a, uh, an Austrian mathematician and uh, C Cesaro, who was Italian, of course, uh, and they were, you know, they stated and, and proved it. I'm going to share with you, I uh, because of the because of a lack of time. I'm going to, I, the fastest uh, way you can look this up is on uh, Wikipedia, and this is the definition that they have on Wikipedia. But it's good for our purpose here. It says, let a sub n, and n of course has to be a uh, natural, uh, be greater than or equal to one and b sub n and has to be greater than or equal to one be two sequences of real numbers assume that b sub n is a strictly monotone and divergent sequence that is strictly increasing and approaching positive infinity or strictly decreasing and approaching negative infinity and we have the following limit we've got the following limit a sub n plus 1 minus a sub n divided by b sub n plus 1 minus b sub n is equal to L. Therefore, the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n is going to equal L. So how can we use that in the, in the problem that we have here? Well, in this case, you notice that we've got two sequences of real numbers. We, the, the first one is a sub n. We could call that one. We have a, uh, hopefully I can write it out with my computer's been acting up today. So we can call the first sequence a sub n. And of course, we have to remember that n is, a, is an element of the natural numbers. So we could put that here as a little note. And from there, we have uh, cosine, well, if you look at the problem, right, we have cosine 1 plus cosine 2.
plus, and then the three, and it goes on, plus cosine n. Well, actually, I'm going to move this here. There we go. And our second sequence is going to be, uh, we could call it uh, B sub N. Uh, and of course, N has to be an element of the natural numbers equals N squared. Now, we have to find, now, now that we have the limit here, the theorem, we have to find a sub n plus 1 minus a sub n divided by b sub n plus 1 minus b sub n so that we can verify that all of the conditions, we can apply all of the conditions that uh, are applicable to the theorem, right? So let's see if we can do that, right? We have the limits of, the first one is, limit as n approaches infinity And we have the cosine of 1 plus the cosine of 2 and we have plus the, the three dots plus cosine n minus I think I'm going to need more room. I'm going to erase this. I want to make it a little bit neater because I want to make sure that everybody's following the law. Let me make this neater with more room. All right, so hopefully it looks a lot neater this way so that you can all see. So if we apply the theorem, now it's just a question of plugging everything into the theorem that we have from the information we have. And we just combine the like terms. We have, well, we have cosine of 1 minus cosine of 1, so that vanishes. We have cosine of 2 minus cosine of 2, that vanishes. We have cosine of n minus cosine of n, that vanishes. And now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the cosine of n plus 1 divided by... Now... Notice on the uh, in the denominator here, the n plus 1 uh, squared becomes, you can make, well, we have n squared, we can make that n squared plus 2n plus 1. Minus n squared, and of course, once again, the n squares cancel out. So we have the cosine of n plus 1. over 2n plus 1. And so because of that, we have that's going to be equal to 0. Remember, very important to remember here that the value, by the way, of the cosine of n plus 1 is uh, bounded, right? Because the absolute value of the cosine of n plus 1 has to be less than 1. So we say that it's bounded. Uh, in that sense. So we have the cosine of n plus 1 divided by the uh, 2n plus 1 as the limit approaches infinity. And therefore, we have we have shown that the original uh, problem, ex it exists and it is equal to 0. So I hope you found this interesting. You can see that there's a lot of theorems out there that you can uh, apply uh, very easily. And 
especially when it comes to the uh, limits when it comes to approaching infinity. May you all have a great night. Hopefully you'll have a good night, restful. And uh, tomorrow, hopefully I can uh, post if I have time to uh, think about what I'm going to talk about uh, to post one of these Sunday moral messages. Thank you all.